How you doing, man? I'm wonderful. Yeah, you are definitely blessed. How's the definitely. family? Wonderful. Everybody's wonderful. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Any of your kids thinking about show business at this point? Uh, not at this point. Yeah. Not at this point. Every now and then somebody would, my son a couple of years ago was like, I want to do something. I want to act. I'm like, if you want to act, you, you'll want to act when you're 18. You know, wait till you get grown. Because uh, it's a really short list of people that started acting when they were young that you know are still around. <laughs> and if they're around, they're in therapy. <laughs> With the exception of Ron Howard and Kurt Russell. Everybody else is pretty fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> you start acting now, yeah, you're you guaranteed start, yeah, a guaranteed. cable special. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to you? <laughs> that, you know, that's good advice you gave them. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, but you know what? You were right there on the cusp, but right there at 18. Well, your stand-up, your stand-up started when you were, what, 13, 14 years old? 15 when I started doing stand-up, but not in the public. I wasn't, I got known from Saturday Night Live before I did stand-up. They didn't know I did stand-up until, like, you know, two, three years of seeing me on SNL. Then I popped up on HBO. Right. But they didn't know me from stand-up when I was younger. Yeah. And what drew you to stand-up comedy? Richard Pryor. Yeah. I had a sense of humor, and I saw, uh, the, uh, that Niggas Crazy album. Oh, yeah. I heard that album. And uh, back in 74 or 5 or 6, and, uh, that just became, I remember being in the basement and listening to that record and over and over again, because that's back when you're not supposed to listen to the dirty records. Right. You listen to the dirty records over and over again. I was like, wow, that's, that's, who, that's what I am. I want to be that. Right. Yeah. yeah, the album cover was funny when they had them, you know, all tied up and they that's were. All... A, that's a, that's was it something I said. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. that nigga's crazy. He's doing something like that. It's right, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something I said. <laughs> something I said. Yeah, you're ready to burn him or something. <laughs> we're gonna burn him at the stake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that's yeah. good, man. Any other influences for you? Richard Pryor, Bill Cosby. You know, when I was a kid, those were, uh, and still as an adult, those are still two of my favorite comedians. Richard's my favorite comedian, and Rich and Bill Cosby said. He's, great genius, his comic genius. So I grew up, you know, looking at and admiring those two guys. And as I got older, you know, I started getting into Carlin and other people. But uh, right. when I was growing up, it was mostly those two guys. Yeah. What do you think made them so special? Uh, Richard is a brilliant, brilliant mind and just the genius of comedy. And, and Bill Cosby is a brilliant genius storyteller. Yeah. You know, two different, total different sides of the spectrum, but both genius. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and Cosby so prolific. I mean, just hours and hours, and just simply sharing his life. Yeah, just uh, just one of the great geniuses of the art form, Bill yeah. Cosby. Absolutely. You remember one of your first comedy routines? Yeah, but they're pretty atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> I came across a, 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 a little thing. You know, you write what you're gonna do. Yeah. The bitch, you know, gonna go do this. I did it. I found this thing once, and one of my bits was called eating boogers. <laughs> So it was like, I'm going to come out, I'm going to do Ali, I'm going to do Muhammad Ali, then I'm going to do, then I'm going to eat it. It said, eating boogers in parentheses, it said, a must. <laughs> like, that was my killer bit, <laughs> my eating booger bit. <laughs> I'm closing with that yeah, one. I'm going to close with eating boogers. It brings the house down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was the first routine, about 14 or so. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, at what point did you realize, I'm funny, I'm really, I've got something here? Well, there's two different revelations. Uh -huh. I'm funny, and I've got something that came at two different times. Right. Uh, I was I knew I was funny really, really early on. In my house, it's really funny. My mother, my brothers, my father, everybody has a sense of humor. And I was a funny around the house. And then I became funny around my little group of friends. So I knew really early on that if I was trying to do something funny, I could get a reaction from it. And uh, after I got on the stage and started doing stand-up when I was around 15, and I would see the reaction. That's when it was like, hey, I, this, there's something, I got something here. Right, yeah. and then you started to hone it. I started to do it. Yeah. I didn't know if I was honing it. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing it as much as possible. You remember your first night on stage? Yeah, I was at a place called uh, Mr. Hicks Place. The first place I did stand up as a grown, uh, stand up, first place I ever did stand up period is the, the, the Roosevelt Youth Center when I'm 15. I remember that. But the first place we was a grown up in front of grown up people on 15 as well was a bar called Mr. Hicks Place. <laughs> it's like they used to have gong show night. Remember they used to have the gong right. show? Right. And all the little bars was having gong show nights. All the local, you know, talents going up to gong, getting gonged at the bars and stuff. And you could win like $25. My brother was like, go do Stevie Wonder impression at the gong show night. You could win that money. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So I went down to Mr. Hicks' place. And I, back when I started, I did mostly impressions. I'd do like all voices, like Ali and Cosell. Back then, Ali was, that's how long I've been doing stand up. Ali was the champ when I started. Okay. <laughs> Ali was the champ, and Jimmy Carter was the president. It was. I had a Jimmy Carter impression, and Ali had all this really weird stuff. <laughs> Can you still do them? I'm not going to try. <laughs> I'm not going to try. But I had all of this stuff that I would do. And uh, so I went down to Mr. Hicks' place to do these vo to do my Stevie Wonder impression and win that money. And uh, that's how I started doing it up regularly. Yeah. I lost, incidentally. Oh, okay. I was going to ask you. You didn't get the 25 bucks? I went there. Some dude won up, <laughs> came up. They had a live band there. And the guy won, uh, if you got the time, he got the beer. Miller beer. Miller beer. Remember the Miller? Yeah. If you got the time, right. we got the beer. Miller right. Beer. Okay, this fucker gets on stage, right? <laughs> And we're in Mr. Hicks' place, and he's singing, if you got the time, we got the, he's a great voice, middle of, he doesn't say, he says, so if you got the time, Mr. Hicks has got to be, and when he said Mr. Hicks and replaced Miller time with Mr. Hicks' name, right. the fucking roof came in. <laughs> it was like, Mr. Hicks, ah, yeah, was, there's no way you could follow that. And I lost. You lost. I lost to that guy. Yeah. And he didn't say Mr. Hicks has got to be, he hit, he said, Mr. Hicks have got to be, he said, so if you got the time, run. Mr. Higgs have got the beer. Roof caves in. <laughs> he gets the twenty-five dollars. <laughs> Mr. Higgs sells more beer. Mr. Higgs sold a round of beer on every plate. Gave everybody a round of beer. And you walked home. I walked home. <laughs> and your brother's like, "Did you get the money?" Nah. <laughs> what happened? Mr. Higgs have got the beer. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's the little details. It's the little details. You gotta learn how to split a verb if you want to win that money. <laughs> you never thought you're gonna lose to a guy singing about beer. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Hicks. Mr. Hicks. But the good thing about that, there was a guy named Steve Love in the audience that night, and he owned the place called the Dolphins Cove down the road. Right. And he was like, uh, "How long can you stay on stage?" And I said, "I don't know." And he said. I give you a I give you a dollar for every minute you can stay on stage. <laughs> so I started playing his place down the road, and that made me start writing more. It was like I only had like you know five minutes. It was like every time I could get on, if I get on the stage fifteen minutes, I get fifteen dollars. Right. You know. So it's like I was writing, trying to come up with stuff. Because <laughs> if you go do five minutes, five minutes seems like a really long time if you just start not doing stand up. It is a long time. But yeah, but it ain't a lot of money afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> well, all that money and sweat and shit, you come off, you got $5. Like, shit. <laughs> it's a lot of stress yeah, for yeah, $5. For $5. <laughs> yeah, barely paid for the bus fare. <laughs> bus fare? We was walking to the gig back then. Yeah? Yeah, Dolphins Cove was on Nassau Road, about a mile, a mile and a half from my house. I used to walk to the Walk to the gig. <laughs> <laughs> Just walk on up Just there, get up the five dollars. Get the five dollars and walk back. When I come back in about two months, I'm gonna be up to like twenty minutes. Yeah, I never got to twenty minutes. I got as much as fifteen minutes. I got. Is that right? Back then, yeah. When I was like fifteen, sixteen years old, I had like fifteen minutes, and I would get fifteen dollars. <laughs> Who'd you try your material on? The audience. Just, just go try it out at the club. Not at home. Uh uh. No. -uh. So you went straight to the stage. Yeah, well, you know, the, the mirror, the mirror <laughs> from the mirror to the stage. Right. Acting-wise, who were some of your influences? You know, I never had any acting influences. You know, the only actor I ever tried to copy off of ever, ever, is, and you would never, now, I'll, I'll tell you what it is, and now I'll tell you, you'll be able to see it. The only actor I've ever tried to copy off of was Bruce Lee. Bruce? And that's because when I did an action, when the first movie I did where I was supposed to be mad, I was supposed to do action. I had no reference. In 48 hours, it's like, okay, you're coming down this room and you're, you're mad, or you're coming down this alley. It's a scene in 48 hours where I'm coming down the alley and it's all this neon and I'm supposed to be, you know, intense and I had no reference. I do my Bruce Lee impression and I still do it to this day. When I'm mad on screen, if I pull a gun out, I'm doing, it may not look like Bruce Lee because I look nothing like him, but, I mean, <laughs> but on the inside, it's all my face and stuff, all the shit I'm doing with my eyes. When I get mad, it's all, a, my Bruce Lee impression. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see, that's something no it's one. It's a total, knew. total. It looks. It's a great person to steal from because no one ever has ever watched a movie and said, "He's doing Bruce Lee." <laughs> <laughs> he's doing Bruce Lee because he's a karate guy, and I'm like, not his karate. What he did with his eyes, how he could communicate with his eyes, and what he did with his face. Right. You know, that's right. what. That's what I was trying to steal. Yeah, you're a big fan of martial arts. Big, big fan. Yeah. yeah. 
and boxing fan. Well, my, that's, I'm the bigger fan of boxing. My dad boxed professionally, and I grew up around it. And, and whenever, whenever there's a fight, you know, I'm in front of the TV screen. I watch two bums fight, though, at 4 in the morning, or, you know, <laughs> some channels, of cable channels, be two bums like this, and I'll watch it. I'll be kicking his ass, ain't he? I'll watch any fight. 